Uh, hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. So I'm uh, sitting outside our Flower Mount studio. Um, we have our fundamentals class going on on the inside. And uh, fundamentals are very important, especially for this topic that we'll be discussing today. Uh, because the better your fundamentals, then the better your chances of not getting injured, which with jujitsu, as we all know, who anybody who's been training a year or longer knows that getting injured is fairly easy. Uh, it's actually pretty hard to not get injured because of the fact that we put a lot of stress on joints and our neck and all that kind of stuff. So um, Big Dad Z Zero, uh, he, he responded to our video just a little while ago on how to have the perfect jujitsu grip. He says, good video. Do you have one on how not to get cauliflower ears? Yours look decent. And yes, they are decent. And why is that? Well, I, it's not that I'm not susceptible, susceptible to them because some people just are not really susceptible to cauliflower ear and, and some people are more susceptible to them. Um, believe it or not, funny story. Um, those of you who saw the uh, Hikardo Cavacanti video that I did a couple of years ago. He's the Carson Gracie black belt. So just uh, just look for Carson Gracie black belt and Kama Jiu Jitsu on YouTube and then you'll find the video. But um, he was telling one of my instructors here that people in Brazil that didn't train Jiu Jitsu, they wanted to look like fighters. So what they would do is they would get a clothespin and they would fold their ear and they would pinch it like this deliberately to, to F their ears up. Now. I don't go out of my way to F my ears up. I just don't. On the other hand, if my ears do get kind of like that bruised feeling like you have if you have cauliflower ear or you're developing it, I don't really make a big deal of it. Um, only because I don't want the ears like that, but at the same time, I'm not really anal about it. And whatever happens, happens. But how do you prevent them? Really it comes down to headlocks. You know, anytime that somebody gets your head and they lock it up or um, just it, it comes from pressure or from just, um, you know, just movement like this on your ear, um, that would irritate it and often create a separation between the skin and the cartilage in your ear. And when you sep create a separation, blood will flow into it like a blister. Uh, if you ever had a blister on your toe, that's kind of like what it is, except on your toe, it's usually water. Uh, in your ear, it's blood. And I don't know the exact physicality of it but from what I understand when blood gets into the cartilage then it tends to erode at the cartilage thereby deforming the cartilage so if you don't get that blood out of there and find a way to keep the blood from going back in there then you will have what we call cauliflower ear now that can take many forms um, I have a little bit but mine is inside of the hole here and it's just like a thickening of it and uh, when it did happen, um, I did have a plastic surgeon slice it and drain it, and um, he had to do it twice, actually. Uh, but I was on antibiotics. He, he sewed it up for me, everything. Um, and I had to not train for a couple weeks at least, actually probably about three weeks. Uh, but I don't think I did adhere to that. Uh, but the thing is that the reason why, and I have none on this side on my right ear, the reason why is because I know how to get out of headlocks. And that's the most important thing is to know how to get out. Every time your head's locked up, you can't just fight it. You need to get out properly, right? So um, with, I want to say it's module one in our white to blue belt curriculum, we go over basic headlock escapes. It's either module one or module two, right? And we do it in both, I think. But this is the one where let's say somebody's got you, you know, they're just got you, they're doubling you down. You know, it's the one where they can punch in the face, right? Um, either they're going to grip you or they're going to punch you. Either way, you not to, sh to, to slide your head out that way, because when you do that, your ears go blah, 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 and that's when, the, that's when you create, you know, combined with the pressure of squeezing your, your head and you're wrenching your head out of there, that's how you get them, right? Now, if you're, and if you're susceptible to them, it'll be bad. If you're not susceptible to them, you still could get them by, by taking your head out like that, rather than properly going through the steps of getting the guy on the ground, um, framing his neck and putting a little pain compliance on him so he lets go of your your head so you can then take your head out without having to to rip your head out if you do that alone you learn how to get out of headlocks so there's about how many we probably have like eight headlock escapes from all different angles guillotines count as headlocks by the way um Kesa, Kesa Gatame on the ground that pin can count as a headlock um, so 
go through and practice and drill these and always be conscious of your ears so that you don't get cauliflower ear. And if you have a problem with it, when you start feeling the bruise, you need to stop training right away. Now, what about using a headgear? I used a headgear for 10 years, and it's a pain in the ass. It's just another thing to remember, like a mouthpiece and you know whatever other stuff that people use. And tape for your fingers, which you know we talked about. We don't tape. Um, you know, I just want to get in there and train, right? I just have my gi. If I'm wearing, if we're doing gi, my gi and my belt, and that's it, um, or a rash guard. Um, but I can train without one if I if I need to. If I'm in a, if I'm in a pinch, I can. Or we do no gi like we are right now. It's just rash guard and gi pants for me. But some wear shorts and spats. Um, and that's all. I don't want to have to remember a bunch of stuff. And if, oh shit, I forgot my headgear. Oh shit, I forgot my mouthpiece. You know, I can't train. You know, no, I just, you know, as they say, you know, we have a joke. You know, you have no headgear on the street, or you have no mouth guard on the street, right? And some people say, well, you don't wear a gear on the street, but I do wear a jacket. Um, but so learn how to, you know, train without having to need those things by protecting yourself by learning how to get out of headlocks properly. But if you're gonna use a headgear, use a headgear, but just know that if you use them, your ears will get used to kind of like the soft environment, which means that with me, I got mine because I was wearing a headgear. So I was wearing a headgear and you know, that triangle one, right? And when my, my old master, professor at the time, Kenny Gabrielson, was passing my guard, he was jamming his head into my face right at the top of his head was right in my face and with the headgear it was fine it didn't matter but with the way he was doing it he was moving the headgear over thereby exposing this part of my ear with his head going right there so just the abrasion is what caused the ear to blister up with blood and although I did get it drained I didn't properly not train for you know longer than two weeks which is what I probably should have done and that's why I have a little bit of cauliflower ear but at that time, I knew how to get out of headlocks. So I went all those years without getting cauliflower ears, and then it started. But also what I realized is I forgot my headgear in Hawaii, and this is like my third or fourth pair. You know, I kept forgetting and forgetting. I got to buy a new one all the pain. Um, so I forgot in Hawaii. I'm back in California, and I didn't have a chance to go to Wrestling One to buy another one um, because this is back pre-Amazon days, right? Everything was either mail order or I, didn't, I just went and got it, right? I didn't have time to go to Huntington Beach and grab another set. So I just trained without it. And I realized that my ears weren't quite used to the pressure of being exposed. So I protected them as much as I could and I'd get a little bit of bruising feeling here and there and when it happened, I would, I would stop, I would you know, pay attention to my ears and I would protect them even more. But what eventually happened, you know, here we are decades later, my ears are pretty much used to the grind, right? And it's not a problem for me anymore. You know, me combined, you know, knowing how to get out of headlocks combined with my ears being tougher because they're not protected all the time. So thereby when they're exposed then they're vulnerable, um, that's how I don't have, you know, any noticeable cauliflower ear. So if you think in those terms, then I think that you'll be fine as far as preventing them and not ever getting them. But like I said, you know, there are, you know, you could get them but you're just less likely to get them if you take a few precautions. Hope that helps. If this helped you, go ahead and like the video, please. It really helps us as well as share it if you can and like and subscribe our channel. And see more of us at KamaJujitsuOnline.com where you can see our curriculum and you can learn alongside with us. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.